Hello, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Jason Putz of Physical Therapists, and this is Ted Kruse, Physical Therapist as well at Physical Therapy Solutions in Dyersville, Iowa. Uh, we've uh, gathered some dynamic stretching and, and warm-up activities for uh, coaches in the area, and uh, we'd just like to share them with people around the world as far as uh, providing some inter injury prevention a aspects for sport, uh, as well as a tool um, and a guideline for coaches to kind of look at uh, what they need for individual sports uh, from a dynamic standpoint. We use dynamic stretches to allow the athlete to warm up their muscles and increase blood flow to those muscles to loosen up and also decrease the injury rate. Dynamic stretches do a great job of maintaining the elastic component of the muscles and tendons which static stretching can remove. So dynamic stretches does a good job to uh, decrease injury rate and also improve your athletic performance. With our intro into dynamic stretching, we really want to emphasize to the coaches and to the athletes that are watching this that technique is key. Um, we don't want you to just go out there and kind of go through the motions. You really, to have good carryover to sport and athletic competition, you really need to emphasize technique. Uh, we'll describe that with each, uh, each exercise that we're doing, um, but as well with coaches, I think it's very important that as you're watching these kids and teaching these kids the proper technique, you really want to look, look at their alignment and make sure that they're doing everything properly as we've kind of described with each uh, individual exercise. Here we're looking for the athlete to really come up on the big toe and drive on up. And then as the athlete comes back, you're looking at alignment to maintain his balance. It's also important for the athlete to really drive that knee and pull it up towards his chest to get a good glute stretch. For the butt kick on the toes, the athlete's going to again drive up onto his toes, grab the ankle, and kick backwards. It's important to keep his chest aligned upright and not lean forward. We're trying to get a good quad and rectus femoris stretch, um, so maintaining upright alignment is key. You can see here our athlete does have a slight forward lean that we're trying to really adjust for and uh, keep his chest back as he's pulling that leg back and trying to maintain good balance and, and proprioception when he's on one leg. With teeter-totters, we're really focusing on the hamstring stretching on the leg that he's standing on um, and really working for a good balance and core strength as he's going forward. Really trying to bend at the hip and not the back. By maintaining a good back or a flat back, the athlete will get the best hamstring stretch, but also um, avoid any chances of injury while doing the stretch. You really want your athlete to try to maintain good single leg standing balance as they're going through this motion as well. For the Toy Soldier March, the key or the goal is a controlled yet dynamic hamstring stretch. So speed is important for the athlete here, making sure they're not going too fast and kicking up too aggressively or forcefully. They can reach up and if they have the flexibility, touch their toe to feel a good hamstring stretch and back down maintaining their balance. Their goal, once again, should be trying to maintain their knee be straight to get a good hamstring stretch but if they don't have the flexibility to do that you'll see as our athlete has a little hamstring issues that uh, they're not able to quite get it straight but again you're looking for that single leg balance once again while they're performing the exercise. So the inchworm here is their kind of stretching their feet when they're coming on up and then you see we really want them to bend from their hips 
to really get a good hamstring stretch as they come on up and truly flatten themselves out to get the core and come back up in reverse fashion and walk yourself back out. So the athlete can now add in another component in which they allow their hips to drop down to the floor when they're in the push-up position and get some lumbar extension. Um, just another position they can can loosen up and uh, prepare for prepare for that their athletic activity. High knee with external rotation. The athlete's again going to grab this time their knee and shin or ankle and raise up onto the toes, focusing on good alignment and staying straight forward. With this stretch, we're now stretching the hip rotators and calling those into play. Once again, your athlete's on single leg stance for a long period of time, so you really want them to try to maintain their balance uh, while they're up there on their tiptoe. And here you get the option to see the, the athlete really turn and rotate that hip for that true stretch of the rotators. Here with the uh, lunge and twist, you can get the athlete to get the back leg as the hip flexor stretching, as well as the rotation, getting the obliques to kind of get ready and to be able to perform for athletic uh, competition. There's a lot of different ways the athlete may cheat or perform this stretch without uh, maximizing uh, what you're trying to get out of it. So really watch the athlete's speed as they're coming as he's coming at you. You can see how he's going to rotate through the trunk and really stretch through that opposite hip flexor um, and into the quad and rectus femoris. As a coach, you really want to look for them over-exaggerating and uh, not uh, performing proper alignment when they do this. You can see that he's doing more of a lean back than a rotation. Um, and then all he's looking at the, the knee to make sure that they're in proper alignment when they're coming straight forward. Here with the lateral lunge, we're starting to get the hip adductors and abductors loosening up, get a little rotation into the transverse plane as well while we're warming up these muscles. The nice thing about adding this stretch is the, the different planes that you're starting to work. So the rotation gets the transverse plane, and then the lateral lunge gets the frontal plane, and just another component that uh, your athlete will put themselves in while they're, while they're performing. You want to watch your athlete's technique here. Make sure they're sitting back, like they're sitting down into a chair, um, not lunging too far forward over top, over the front of their knee. With forward and backward hip rotation, we'll have the athlete uh, stepping up and over, um, out to the side and bringing their leg around in front of them. You can choose to do this stretch walking one direction, or you may also have them walking backwards doing the stretch in reverse order. This is really getting all of our hip musculature components um, of stretching both the hip flexors, extensors, um, and small internal and external rotators. You can verbal cue uh, the kids that they're uh, peeing on the fire hydrant as they're going up and over. Um, pro provide a little entertainment for them as they're doing some dynamic stretching. You can see he keeps his body nice and erect the whole time. so he's not leaning off to one side or the other. He's truly getting that motion to happen from his hip joint uh, and not compensating from another part of his low back. And don't forget to have your athlete utilize their arm swing like they normally, as they normally would while running. Uh, 
arm circles are uh, really trying to loosen up the shoulders and starting out small circles, working bigger, as well as starting out slow, uh, working to increase your speed as you're going around. Uh, start forward and then we will reverse the same pattern backwards. Um, really looking for your athlete to keep his head straight ahead uh, and maintain the good alignment there. Your athlete's going to be loosening up and mobilizing the shoulder or glenohumeral joint and also the scapular thoracic joint on the back side. With self hugs, you're going to have the athlete starting nice and slow, reaching around across them. Um, you're getting a good stretch on the pec muscles as the arms goes back and also on the posterior cuff and posterior shoulder as they wrap around to the front. Again, look for your student athlete's uh, neck not to protrude out as the arms go behind and retract back and forth, but rather keep good alignment looking straight ahead. Same time. With ankling, the athlete's going to start in a stationary position and keep their knees relatively straight, uh, popping their forefoot into the floor. You should actually hear a popping sound if they're on a hard surface. Uh, there will be a learning curve to this exercise as well, and uh, the athletes will improve as they go, but take your time and, and really teach the technique with this exercise. The high knee exercise is really meant to loosen up the hips and get them ready for sport in the sagittal plane. At the same time, really emphasizing to your athlete to be pumping his arms just like they would be in sport. Quick skips, the athletes again looking or focusing on having their upper extremities and lower extremities work together keeping good alignment, working straight ahead. Their cue should be the toes hitting the ground and quickly popping back off into the skip. I'm really looking for alignment to drive everything straight ahead just like they would if they were running. Power skips are my hand clean of uh, dynamic stretching really driving everything forward, stretching the hips out, and emphasizing both the arms and the legs to propel yourself and getting everything working from the calves uh, to the hamstrings, glutes, uh, biceps, really, and shoulders, really firing everything up, wanting to look for alignment. So driving everything forward and really having the knee drive forward and, and everything needs to look straight ahead. Butt kicks, you want to have the athlete uh, staying upright, kicking their butt, kicking their heels back towards their butt. This should give them a quick stretch on their quad and rectus femoris. If they were to cheat and lean forward, they may lose some of that stretch. So coaches, watch their alignment. Um, they can also cheat here. You can see the athlete kicking his feet out a little bit too much, so we'd like to see that heel coming straight up towards the butt, toes staying straight ahead as well. Form runs really starts to put everything together. Coaches get a good viewpoint of your athlete, watch them come at you. So their arm drive and knee drive are all coming straight ahead, straight forward. You can also have the athlete add an accelerated component to this where they start slowly, build up that speed to 75 to 100% of their sprint, and slowly come back down. <laughs> 